Synopsis Podcast Massacre contains spoilers and adult language. For more horror, visit us at our website at texaspodcastmassacre.com. Another episode of Texas Podcast Master coming to you live from Houston, Texas. I'm your host Mitch, and with me, as always, is uh, my cat from hell, Nate. I can't believe this. You're hiring me to kill a cat. I would have thought it'd been a dog, so to be a more on brand. No. But that's fine. Well, fair. Uh, welcome to another episode of Texas Podcast Massacre, where each week we take a look at a different horror movie and debate a horror-related topic. Amongst ourselves, Nate. Welcome back from lot for what two weeks ago we were on hiatus last week. Shabbat, little, little... Shabbat, Shabbat Shalom. Oh. <laughs> Jeez, all right. <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> <The hell? laughs> yeah, um, I just, that's that's my that's how I say hi now. So it's been, it's been a bit. Yeah, there you go. Uh, well, anyway, welcome. <laughs> <laughs> on that note. Tell me, tell me about the really, really different things you've done in the last week. Nay, like, nay, my become a different person. Nay, my my life has been a horror a horror movie in the last few weeks. So it's been it's been like walking it's been around rough. and yeah. it's like dealing with the plague here. Um, everybody's been sick at random times, not all together. I don't know if that's better or worse. If everyone all together is, is much better. I would think so, right? Everyone just is middle together. You all get over at the same time. It has not been that. <laughs> so, uh, yes, been basically my own. Oh man, should George we have Mara done? Should, film. should we? Should we have done wreck instead of this? Why wreck? Oh, wreck, wreck. I like record. Yeah, exactly. Okay. That maybe, maybe the Spanish version or the remake. No, oh, the original. Yeah, Quarantine is the U.S. version. Oh, they're, they're both. I mean, even that's that. What's one of the more decent? I mean, it, know, it was it remakes. was just a shot for shot. Like, hey, it's the same movie, just not in Spanish. But from the lady from Dexter. Yes. So <laughs> different. Yeah. Um, yeah. It, it, well, sure. No, we we this week we decided to do hey, a movie. That movie was seventy eight minutes. Are you interested now? Oh yes, anything under the ni- <laughs> under ninety, I, I I become more and more interested. Um, no, we are reviewing uh, Tales from the Dark Side, the movie, one of your favorite movies of all time, Flash Creep Show Three. Yeah, I've been trying to bark in a, like I've been trying to get you to watch this movie for a while. We watched it together, you and during I. March Madness <laughs> one year. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I still remembered most of it, the, yeah. the vast majority of it. Yeah. Um. Yeah, I I grew up watching this movie quite a bit. It's um you know George George A. Romero's involved in it, right? Has wrote wrote some of the stories. Stephen you know Stephen King's there. A lot of the people Stevie. involved. Stevie, in, Stevie King. A lot of the people involved in the um original Creep Show movie. Uh, back really on this. Um, I I was even trying to think. I mean, that's not in our debate question. But I was even trying to think. Do I prefer this movie to Creep Show, the original? And I don't know. I really like this movie. I don't. I don't. <laughs> but, but yeah, I mean, it's a question. It's a question. I mean, it's it's, it's not out of the realm of possibility. Don't get me wrong. I mean, I think I enjoyed the movie. stories more. And you know, Creep Show always had a little bit more of a cartoony type of atmosphere to it. This mm-hmm. one had had less of that. Um, maybe that's what I liked about it. But it's good. So yeah, I I I want to I want I want everyone on the record. I want you on the record saying what you thought about this movie. Um and yeah, look we've got some stuff to talk about this anthology. Uh but Nate, I've got a I've got a different a little bit of a different uh, debate question for you. Bid our father the sea king rise from the depths full foul in his fury. 
Black waves teeming with salt foam to smother this young mouth with punch and slime. Um, yeah, Nate, I got a different debate question for you. It's not really super pertaining to this movie. But I am curious, and it maybe even kind of fits more into a news. Like, I've got two what could be just gangbuster films coming out. And, you know, when you have you have kids that their heads are spinning and pea soup vomits going all over the place and, you know, everyone's possessed, you don't really have a lot of time to go out to the movie theater. So I potentially have a chance to break free. Mm-hmm. But I've got two movies to choose from, Nate. And I don't know what... I, man, I don't know what to do. Do I go see The Evil Dead Rises, which comes out this week? Um, okay, Evil Dead Rise, yes. Or Ari Aster's new film, Bo is Afraid, with Joaquin Phoenix. Now... Uh, let me let me explain. There is literally an hour difference between the run times of these films. Is it like an hour and a half difference? It might be. I mean, it's it's it, one is damn near three hours. One is an hour. One is an hour. One is an hour and thirty seven minutes, and one is just about three hours. Yeah, it's I twice the movie. So I mean, yeah, I'm getting twice the movie for if I pick one. Yeah, that's. I'd go see Evil Dead, personally. Don't get me wrong. I'll see Bo is, Bo is Afraid, which for, a, which for a few brief moments I thought was Bo is Beautiful, which would be another good title for that. But uh, I, would go see, I would go see Evil Dead Rise. Um, it's going to, I feel like, okay, so like, you know, we saw Smile, obviously, at Fantastic Fest last year. I feel like this is like smile too. Like just keep it going. Based on the trailer that you you showed me, it's I mean, just like a creepier, now, bigger Ev- budget smile. Well, Evil Dead Rise, I feel like you're you're all in on because of the what is a hundred percent guaranteed imminent child danger. <laughs> it's like a it's like ten million percent guaranteed. Yeah. So it, children name like I mean that's trigger one. That's a, this is a this is an extra. I mean, you know, if Lisa were here, this is 100%. Nate, she can't even look at, like, the, the trailer or the poster without get just being like, no, fuck that. <laughs> like, very upset. Very upset. Like, every time she, like, we ha- so we have a separate YouTube account for me versus everyone else in the household because I have all like the horror trailers and everything. And, you know, we, we, you know, as much as I joke around, we don't actually want the kids to see, <laughs> to see the random just screenshots and she keeps popping on mine. And she's like, what the fuck is that thing? <laughs> I'm like, Oh yeah, that's evil dead rises. Look, it looks great. Right. Can we agree on that? I mean, w- regardless of anything else, it looks, looks great. Um, It looks it looks it looks great. But Ari was afraid. But Ari was afraid. I'll probably watch like four times. But that's the, in well, the that's, theater. No. That, well, okay. Okay. So that's that's your thing. You you'd rather go. You you're thinking more just the experience of being in the theater versus which movie do you or do you think? Yeah. Is better? First first weekend you go see Evil Dead Rise. It'll be a better movie theater going experience. That is fair. That is that is will it be as good? Will it be as good as seeing Smile w- without me there? Absolutely not. No, without but, you jumping in your seat and uh, yelling, "Oh shit!" Yeah, I mean, oh no, shit! Not, no, it was not that low. It was at least two <laughs> octaves higher. Oh, oh. shit! <laughs> that was, that's, 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 you're on the wrong way. <laughs> you're going the wrong way with it. Um, I hope. I, I one day I really hope. I hope there's someone that tells a story to their friends. And they're talking about like they heard you say it, and that's like a high, that was a highlight for them. Um, yeah, but, I feel like you're you're making it sound like I was like Alvin and the Chipmunk. It was <laughs> it wasn't anywhere near that level. <laughs> well, it was funny mostly because you were just trying to talk shit to me the whole time, like, and you just I, I just saw it coming. I wasn't and you talking didn't. shit. I was the lady was doing some like audio, 
she was she was like mixing some audio to try to like get into a demon like to hear a demon i'm like this is right up your like this is right in your wheelhouse i was telling you about it and then it got me it just i turned right into the jump scare it was like it was literally a jump scare it was perfect um so yeah i mean so this is what you you, you got to try to do that to the person you sit next to now at evil that rise i guarantee you'll have a chance this this is what you go around doing now in the theaters. You try to get other people to jump. What do you think about that? Uh, I don't know. Like this, like subtly set up something where you can like kind of tip their like the underneath of their chair a little bit, and then it's like uh, like right at a spot, and then it gets them. You should do that. Well, there's that. I don't know. I this. My only, I mean, my concern really is Evil Dead Rises. Do I really? I mean, it's going to be a, a absolute gore fest. It's going to be. I mean, you're probably right. Seeing it with a group might be something. I. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Is it going to be as good as Terrifier Two in that like bedroom like mutilation scene? I don't know. Probably not. Maybe. Probably not. But the movie will be better. Well, well, I don't. Well, I like hey, I like Terrifier two quite a bit. So let's who knows. Um, I was afraid. I don't know, but you know what? It's funny though because we saw Hereditary in theaters, and I recall literally just not being able to contain myself and and just yelling at it. Um, toward the end of it, <laughs> and I think I got the whole theater. I start laughing. You were yeah when she when she did the. Uh... The fly across, the fly across. I couldn't. I couldn't. Yeah, I couldn't. I don't even know that. what you were. You were. You were just like no. And I forgot what you said. It was. It was hilarious. Uh, yeah. So I mean, what's the difference between that? No oh, shit. Basically the same thing. I same. mean, yours came out of a place of got you. Mine was like this is the dumbest thing I've seen. You're ever. you're like incredulous. It was awesome. I. It was, I mean, Ari Aster, it, his shit's just, it just bombards the senses. You know what I mean? Like, you're just getting hit in all sorts of directions, especially with Hereditary, right? You got old girls' heads lopped off. You got ants all, like, we're not going to show it. We're not going to show it. Ah, there it is, right? Like, I mean, it's a great film. I love the story. I love just the whole twists and everything around it. But holy shit, just some of the stuff, like, when you're first watching it just blind and don't know anything about what's going on with it. And you're just, your brain just can't keep up with everything in that story. And then a, a woman's headless body just floats off after she's removed her own head. And it just like floats up like fucking headless Mary Poppins into a tree house. I think my brain just stopped working. I, I think that's all that was is my brain just stopped working. And I just I was uh, I was like, this is this is getting better and better. <laughs> That's literally what I was thinking the entire time. Like this could I mean, be better if I wanted to. Naked old people, check. Something about seeing Arias from like uh, we saw when we we saw Midsummer twice in the theaters because the first time it there was a power outage yeah. <laughs> for the storm. Yeah, we were evacuated. Yeah, it was yeah. hilarious. And it was right when like the old people were about like the first deaths are about to happen. You're like Oh, okay. We're finally about to rain, but then shut down. I'm like, what? <laughs> no. Yeah, they they tried so to watch best, Florence Pugh we, sob uncontrollably for like. That was more later. Action. We we oh no, there was early. So oh, yeah, never mind. Oh yeah, no, no we she's saw, we definitely Florence Pugh is sad. Percent. Is uh just totally sad through the the bulk of this film for good reason. But then when you watch it twice. <laughs> Or or the one and a half times, I guess technically. Um, yeah. I don't know. Well, I, I I watched it multiple times after that. Don't worry. You're so. saying Evil Dead Rises. I'm just just as the as the final final point. Um, I'm sorry, I have to do this, but it's Evil Dead Rise. I'm just I'm so sorry. Why is it? Is it not Rises? Oh my god. No, Evil Dead Rise, like a high rise. Oh, uh, Evil Dead. Oh. Uh, I don't know why they did Jesus. that, but, but they, but they, but they did. I mean, I think that was probably the elevator pitch for it. Interestingly enough, at least according to Rotten Tomatoes and Collider, so Collider, because I just googled this, 
Uh, Collider. No, no, no. Yeah. Oh my God. <laughs> well, okay. it gives you three oh. scores. Uh, they both are four out of five. Okay. Way to, way to okay. really, way to, okay. way to really uh, stick out there. Uh, IMDb. Bo is Afraid got a 7.4. Uh, Evil Dead Rise got 7.6. Rotten Tomato, though, Nate, can you mm -hmm. guess what the Rotten Tomato scores are for the two of these? Uh, not looking. I, I'm not. I'm not gonna look. Uh, for so for which one? Bo, so let's. Well, Bo, Bo is afraid, or um, Bo is afraid on IMDb, or no? On no, uh, rotten, rotten, said. rotten. Ninety percent. Okay. Okay. What about Evil Dead Rise? What's your guess there? Seventy percent. Flip them. Oh, flip them. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> 74% for Bo is Afraid, 95% for All right, Rotten there we go. Tomatoes. All right. Just, yeah, just gotta flip it. Okay. All right. All right. Well, all right. You, you know what? Is all it right. as good as the Super Mario Brother movie that I, that's the last movie I saw in the theater. So Probably it's better. As good as that? It's got to be better. Okay. Maybe, Dang. who knows? Maybe the uh, Dead Eye mom starts singing Peaches. Dude, there is actually a straight up horror character in. In um, Super Mario movie, there is a nihilist star thing that is like is like I think it, I think a direct quote from that movie is like the sweet release of death. Jesus, <laughs> I know it's pretty awesome. That was a highlight for me. So, are you just? I mean, I guess my are you just excited about all the child endangerment and Evil Dead Rise? Is that really what you're? I think it's gonna be good. Evil Dead movies are good, generally. TV shows even pretty solid. Did you watch nice. Ash versus Evil Dead at all? I watched the first season. Yes, I did. Didn't finish. I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. All right. Well, look. I think maybe I've made my my decision. We'll 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 figure it out. You still have to go watch uh, Renfield. I will watch it tomorrow. Uh, which fifty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. <laughs> <laughs> all right, it's it's going, getting better and better. I like it, it um. 80% audience score, though, if that makes any sense. Okay, crowd pleaser. All right, I have a debate question for you. We're oh, just making the whole thing a debate question. That's fine. The, the movie of the week, Tales from the Dark Side, colon, the movie, is an anthology movie. Your, your boy, Art the Clown, right? You mentioned your favorite movie of all time, Terrifier 2. Was from All Hallows Eve, right? The uh, anthology movie. They pulled him out, you know, made a straight up standalone Art the Clown movie. Obviously, a third one's already coming, so it's going well. In this movie, one of your favorite movies from growing up, uh, which of these film or which of these short segments could be its own film? I have a I have a pick. That I think would be awesome. Okay, what's your pick? But do, fine, I'll go first, so you can you can come up with yours. So we got we got little Timmy, right? Little Timmy, a little captured, captured by uh, Deborah Harry. She said, "Call me," and then he, well, never mind. Don't want to give away the end of the movie, but the uh, Timmy is reading the stories out. That's kind of the whole, whole plot of the movie, right? You got the mummy, you got the mummy one, the cat one, and the gargoyle one. <laughs> if you want to be really reductive about it. So I was thinking, okay, well, there's not a lot of mummy movies, right? When was the last mummy movie you've seen that wasn't from the mummy franchise? It's been a while. That included Tom Cruise one? Yes, that includes that one. I don't know. Then the it's, Tom it's, Cruise one. <laughs> no, it doesn't not the Tom Cruise one and not and not the Brendan Fraser property. Are there other mummy movies to watch, Nate? I don't know. <laughs> there are from a long time ago. Yeah, yeah there are. Up. Okay, sure. Yeah. Mummy versus Wolfman. I don't know. Um, 
<laughs> Mummy versus Wolf. <laughs> <laughs> it's like is that like Abbott and Costello versus Frankenstein or something? Like, I know, yeah, 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 something like that. Um, was, uh, um, yeah, I, there, there hasn't been maybe a Goosebumps episode. To be fair, <laughs> it might have been last this movie. One, Frankly, it might have been this movie, Nate. This might have been the last Mummy movie. <laughs> there are. Should we do a? Should we do Mummy Month? It just rolls off the tongue so nicely. Because I like Mummy movies. Uh, there has hasn't been that many recently. Um, Bubba Hotep is probably the last one that I can I can think of. Yeah, Bubba Hotep. It, that that's it. I can't even think of anything else though. Um, other than like going back in like the fifties and sixties, Christopher Lee. But the um, but then I was thinking, but a mummy movie is like okay, that's fine. But what about Mitch? If there was a standalone movie about Timmy. Timmy, what does Timmy do in this one, right? Gets locked up in the pantry. It's about to get cooked. Starts telling some stories. Ends up getting out of it. Classic one-liner at the end. I just want a movie about that, but it's the good son, but it's also Dexter where the kid gets witches who get kids. And you follow him around. What do you think about that? Wait, what? <laughs> Hold on. It's this kid. The, he's Dexter. He kills people a lot, but only witches who are trying to get kids. How, many, cross wi- how many witches are there that are trying to get kids? They're all over the place. They're all over the place. De- Debbie Harry was just the first. Of ma- of many, I would like. I, I want to go a different direction. I I'd rather have like a. Uh, but what about a child serial killer that you liked? I was trying to think of that. Mo- what is that movie? The Good Son. So, but it's not. You don't <laughs> like it. See, I want a likable mm-hmm. version. You know, you know, Problem Child. Mitch, you know that movie. <laughs> yeah, I want yes. Problem Child meets Good Son meets Dexter. That's what I want. Is that is too much to ask? Yes, it is very too much to ask. <laughs> More John Ritter for you right there. You're big John well, the fair. Um, can't go wrong there. Uh, I don't know. You know, I was thinking more of a Hansel and Gretel meets America's Got Talent. I mean, yeah, this kid got out by reading stories, but like other kids probably got away. Right. Like, I mean, what if it's like a like there's multiple kids there and they're all like trying a different thing to like be like, hey, <laughs> what is it called? Oven games? <laughs> you, yeah. You oh, no, it's, I mean, it's, it's the hung, it's the hung, hungry games is, is the you know. hungry games. OK, well, like, I mean, because because then when you get some actual child endangerment, extra, extra, because now they're competing against each other. Right? Oh, OK. Someone okay. Get, there's an opportunity for one of them to get got and. But it's like little kids, like instead of a Hunger Games, like tummy troubles or so. Like, what are <laughs> what are we even talking about? The the hangry games. Yeah, I mean, you know, <laughs> I'm just saying, not every kid makes it in these in these situations, right? Not everyone just happens to have a magic book that has like really and you know elaborate stories. Um, like one kid, you know, tried to sing, uh, like Hootie and the Blowfish covers uh, to try to survive, like. Oh my god! Okay, I okay, I see. That is, oh, I like that a lot. Right, like, and then and then the and then the anthology. It's an anthology, but it's each kid. Yeah, it's black. It's black phone esque almost. Mm-hmm. But in but in real time. Yes, I like that a lot. I that that's that's real good. Dang. So is Debbie Harry like the main character, and then? There's the different kids try different things to get out. So you're seeing it from her perspective, maybe even to, to flip it around. And maybe look, maybe she has to eat the kid to do some spell to get her son back. You know, she's getting blackmailed by another witch. <laughs> I don't know what her backstory is. Could be good though. You can go into that even. Or, or not, or you can just <laughs> like why? I like that one. What is it called? Tales from the Dark Side Two colon the movie colon 
I don't know. Hungry for some hungry for I don't know. I don't know. Hungry. Just 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 say hungry. Just colon oh. hungry. Or it's like uh Michael Fassbender. Or what if hunger. what if it's Very like close. what if it's more of a convention and like all the witches bring like the one like they're all bring like Okay, so look, they're all trying to ki- cook these kids, right? I mean, that's that's the whole impetus for this whole whole thing. I'm not even gonna play the trailer, guys. Look, here's the deal: it's just a bunch of short. It's an anthology. Kids, <laughs> kids trying not to get eat eaten and cooked. Fuck like it, a, we're doing it live. Yeah, there we I go. Just, I love it. This is great. Do it. Here's here's the deal. I mean, he he's trying to avoid getting cooked. Okay, and she's got this like <laughs> she is just you Julia. Said cooked. You said cooked thirty five <laughs> times so far. I'm already loving it. <laughs> She's just like going all Julia Childs on this, right? Um, you know, I want to see a, a a kid. It's a kid cooking competition. Uh, <laughs> yeah, okay, okay. So it's multiple witches bringing their kids, and they're like, they're like, like it's like a a, 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 a Iron Chef type of thing. I like this. Uh, um, I like that a lot. And so yeah, and then all the kids are trying different ways of getting out of it, you know, and. What if it was just Iron Chef? What if you just see these three? Like, what if that was the reveal? They're witches, and they're all you see these three contestants, and it's like and the secret ingredient for today's competition is yes, dun, yes, dun, 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 dun. kids. You know, like that would be great. I would. I mean, yeah, I love that. I I love that a lot. Mm. So let's make it. <laughs> That seems like a great movie to get made. <laughs> Eating kids, check. Forcing kids against their will to do games, check. Witches, check. Yeah, sounds great. I'm, just, I'm in. Oh, what if what if instead of Master Chef, it's like something with UNICEF because it's about the kids. I was trying, I was trying to think of what rhymes with Chef. <laughs> Or what if the tagline is like this master chef ain't UNICEF? <laughs> that could be the worst joke I've ever made in my whole life. So there you go. See? It, I, I love it, Mitch. When when are we making this? As soon as we can get some funding. So look, if you are um if, had, if you're green lighting you. projects for some uh for Bloom House, <laughs> uh just give us a I, I, it's Bloom House and who else in eight? I mean it's it's like there's a Hunger Games movie coming out this year. So tie in, just saying, easy. Easy tie in. No. <laughs> <sighs> okay. All right. There you go. Um, Congrats, congratulations. There you go. But let us know at TX Pod Massacre on Twitter, TX Podcast Massacre at gmail.com, TX Pod Massacre at gmail.com. Send us that green lit check money. Send us a check at 346 246 3143. Is it like some sort of fax thing? Like, if you fax that number, will it print out a check like on our end? Like, I don't know what. Did you set that up? Just, just say your credit card number into our Google voicemail thing. Like, that's that's wait, the easiest. Wait, 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 wait. What if the kid is named Andre? Like, just a remake of my dinner with Andre. My dinner, my my dinner of Andre. Yeah. I like that a lot. This, these are all great ideas. There's so much. They're ideas, Nate. Here. Let's let you're giving that way. They're, they're ideas. Good. These, these great ideas. <laughs> like, man. All right. It's easy, easy money here. Yeah. Okay. I'm just, we just got, we got to write it so it's a franchise, Mitch. You can't just have kids being dangerous in one movie. Oh well, like, sure. What, what, are, what are we even doing at that point? Like, it's got to be consistent. Although I realize that's, this is kind of just the witches, isn't it? No, they're not making them play games. They're not. There's no. There's no. I, why like, don't I know. remember what the whole point of what their master? What if? Was. What if? What if? What if? Tournament of on, rats what, or something. But what if, like, for the finale of the Master Chef 
games, they bring in celebrity witches a la the Vampire Council from what we do in the shadows, and they bring famous witches from other properties. Like the witches. Anya Taylor Joy is there in like old garb. Uh like wouldn't that be cool? Kind of cool. All your all your famous witches show up. Exactly. Karaoke, karaoke nights, uh the Winifred sisters. Um Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like wouldn't this be wouldn't this be easy? Yeah, I mean this would be easy. Yeah, I mean, because theirs would be more of like a soup. You know, they're always like, you know, they're sucking the soul out, you know, and everything. So I would think they would be cooking a soup. Yeah. What if um, they have masks on and then like they're like, oh, that kid tastes good. And they put the mask off and it's Melissa Joan Hart. Mm, oh my I mean, come on. I mean, what are we? Come on. Right. Mm-hmm. I like it. Right. I like it. I like it. Okay. Uh, what, if yeah. the witch from, what if the witch from uh, Gretel and Hansel's in there? Then, then now we're really talking. Jesus Christ. We were talking about leaving. This is what we're talking about. What? Ugh. The old the old lady from Rosemary's Baby is not alive, right? Because look, <laughs> because we could get her. we're going to talk about the the other stories as part of this, but they're not really consequential to the main story. Let's finish this main storyline. Let me ask this: What is it with witches and their like absolute need to have an oversized oven? Because they're putting kids in, man. Kids, get hey, big. You, I know this. Kids get big, man. Man, you don't. No one who is cooking a whole ass cow in their gr- like on their grill. I mean, it seems wasteful. Don't get there me wrong. is there is some amount. There's got to be more efficient look, ways to there, do. Well, that's this. well, I that's what I mean. There. You you gotta. There's no. It's 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 unnecessary. You take care of the. Sh- Why are you throwing them in hole? You're not throwing pigs in you're, a hole. You don't do anything. You're saying else the with. witches, like the witches should just be more down to earth. Like, so in this movie, she's, this seems like a pretty well, rich house. Nate, you can't. So this is a rich witch. Right. Nate, here. So you, you can't get knocked in fully into your own oven. If you are, don't have an oversized oven that fits an entire person. <laughs> it just seems it just look, and it, look, there are, it, more than one witch has befall has had this terrible tragedy befallen them, right? Where they get knocked into an oven. I think specifically two that I'm aware of. That's still yeah, too I mean, too like, many. When, this is an avoidable you, issue. And I don't get. I think you know if I was gonna be a, we're not even gonna talk about this movie. Who cares? <laughs> if I was gonna be a witch, you got two. You have. A, you have three options to be a witch. One, oven witch, right? Two, cauldron witch. Doesn't the cauldron just seem way safer? I mean, you, you, you're going to get more like third degree burns, which they always talk about like witches that have like boils and warts. And it's probably because they just like they burn them. So, you know, it's just, just, grease, burn. just grease burns at this point, right? Like, it's like. Yeah, like you got to make the fire like the, the appropriate bubble, size but, for your cauldron. You can't just make a cauldron fire. Like yeah. you got to, you got to like portion it out correctly. Well, you need it bubbling. I mean, it's 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 not double double boil in trouble for nothing, man. It's you know. What you if gotta, what if witches got like Dutch oven technology? Does that change the whole game? Is that that changes the whole game, right? Yeah. Is there a witch out there using a slow cooker? <laughs> yeah. I'm sending I'm sending this child on to low for about eight hours. I got, I got, I got a George Foreman Junior Junior grill. How <laughs> uh, <laughs> good I'm gonna make, I'm gonna make it, make a panini out of this. Kid. An air, an air, you know, an air fryer. It just, <laughs> <laughs> it's a, it's called Ninja because they s- stole the kid in the night. Stealth. Oh Maybe that's it. I don't know. Yeah, I, don't know. I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, I that's imagine. what they need. This is we need to make. This is the product that's needed. Which is, or yeah, they're getting burned by like. Can you imagine the infomercial of this? Like, you well, just that's see, what you if see a witch a- like bump into a cauldron again, and then it like goes into black and white, and it goes like ah, oh, you know, and stops, and it's like oh, the oven. You see this like the witch fall into the oven, and it has like a like a red X over it. And well, it's I mean, like, that's here. A, that's a great thing because look, this lady has a full on dungeon in her kitchen. Uh, to keep this kid. Yeah, the pantry like, is a in. dungeon pantry. Yeah, yeah, it's like incredible. I just, I would love to see like the home shopping network for witches. Oh, like look, okay, this cauldron, bejazzled. 
got sequins. It's it's got it'll change colors based on the heat, so you know what temperature. It just and you can get it for the low low price oh, of twenty nine ninety nine. I like. But wait, that. but wait, Nate. There's more. Order now. <laughs> oh, and here's, I, you get a kid and here's kebab. Timmy. Here's kid Timmy. Kebab. Timmy <laughs> was <laughs> Timmy was right walking around the railroad tracks, and here he is. Now comes with uh the first order of you know. <laughs> Yeah, I like that. Like, the, like there, here's the like, here's the spit roast, you know, with it, right? Um, comes with comes with the shackles. Shackles, shackles are uh, like silicone. You can't burn them, right? Like, they're just, they're non like non stick. Everything's great, kid. You know, it, the the meat just falls off the bone, and you can still keep using them. <laughs> like that. <laughs> I mean, and it's got to be like demons or something, right? Like, because here's the thing, right? You witches have sold their soul to the devil, and some they get to have some magic. Cool, you get you get the use magic, and then you've given up your soul. You're now a bride of Satan. Well done, congratulations. But like, unless you had that, like, you're just. I mean, they're just resorting to having to take like just random shit around the house. Like, I guess I got a broom, so we'll just fly on that shit, right? Like, oh, here's a big pot sweet like i feel like i feel like as part of the deal they should get like discounts uh to you know satanic artifacts to help them with their uh hellish uh, crusade okay okay there needs to be an app is it a pyramid scheme like is there like a sally oh, may of witches better that's even better like oh I like oh yeah that. for every like for every for every wit like you're you're building your coven and the way you build your coven is it's totally a pyramid screen. like i bring two people into this coven and then they're yes, gonna bring two people, i love all of and this. then they're gonna that's bring incredible. two and so on and so yeah that's the best thing it's like these people are witches they have powers it could go anywhere but no they end up like selling cosmetics that make you look younger if you're not able to eat a kid. beauty and potions and all of that of course yeah yeah it's like oh i haven't been able to eat a kid in a while my warts are showing like we can we can cover those up no problem yeah i like that a lot these are all great ideas none of these are in this movie but they no. could have been well the oversized could have been the oversized the, oven is unfortunately but the the anthology movie connecting tissue is one of these witches calling in and ordering the thing and then trying to use it and they all fail. That would be incredible. I love it. I love it. That is great. That's the movie. That's the movie. Oh combines so this. I mean, it combines this anthology with um effectively uh television. From um exactly stay yes tuned. stay tuned it. yeah I mean because classic episode of the show stay TV tuned. the television TV is stay tuned cannot just be for Satan to just watch right like other people are, are watching this right I mean otherwise yeah. who cares yeah like you know anyway um Nate I mean I'd be remiss if we didn't I spend a little bit of time talking about the other short stories here all of which are just remakes or retellings of like other stories uh like lot what 249 is literally like arthur Conan doyle's lot number 249 uh the cat from hell was davy king's and then even the thing with the gargoyles uh is a japanese it's quite quite on yeah yeah Yeah. so i mean not yep not a lot of original stuff here um I mean, modernized. Cool. I mean, I, I don't dislike it, but um, which of these did you like the best? Like, rank them for me. You've got mummy, cat, gargoyle. Go. I think the best story is gargoyle. It's the longest, least, for sure. But it's my but my least favorite to watch. So, <laughs> so best story, least favorite to watch. Is is it sad that I say Cat from Hell is my favorite of the three? No, that's sad. It's, it's good. I I probably like the Mummy one the best. It's probably that order: it's Mummy, Cat. Then. Mine's, mine's Cat, Mummy, Gargoyle, and yours is Mummy, Cat, Gargoyle. Yeah. Fair. Yeah. So yeah. we can agree, Gargoyle is the worst. And the fact that it ends in the exact same way that I think the Gargoyle Gremlin dies in Gremlins too. Electricity. 
No, the gargoyle gremlin gets poured, <laughs> gets just, concrete poured just, over it, and gets frozen <laughs> up. Or it's, it, it, well, it was a bat gremlin that turned into a gargoyle because it. Uh, yes. Um, yeah, in the sun for the like the automatic windows or whatever that mm-hmm. weird place. Yeah, I the, I like the cat one. I don't know. It was nice. What about the cat one? Did you like what? What? What about it stands out for you? It's because it's it's such a ridiculous premise. That I love it. And then it becomes more and more real. And the cat, look, the cat out out the throat move. That's real good. A cat climb. Cat's, cat, like, cat, cat's got your tongue. Yeah, I mean it's yeah, the cat's got my tongue and it's taking it down my esophagus. Oh, I'm I'm absolutely dead. Yeah, it's a great kill. Like, and then the cat flexes by not attacking the guy, but he dies anyway from a heart attack. He's so scared. That's like just that's like just just flexing for absolutely no reason. And I'm 100 percent here for it. So, Nate, sorry, I I agree. I agree with that. I'm just. I want to go back to our our question about the kids and, and other thing with the witches. Because I just I'm looking at the cover art for Tales of the Dark Side. You've seen it, right? It's the mm-hmm. dudes holding the book and it's the devil that looks, it looks like, like a gremlin. No, it looks, it looks like, like a gremlin. gremlin. It looks like a gremlin. Yeah. Nate, we would we were talking about reality shows. What if we're all wrong? What if this movie is really an episode of Undercover Boss and this is Satan testing out the witches? Oh, that's incredible stuff. Oh, and the kid is Damien. Like every time. Yeah. Like, oh my God. So it's he like just, a he just, setup. He just it's Damien. parts his hair a little differently, but it's like, oh yeah, they'll oh never recognize me. Oh my God. Yeah. So Damien is like a bait kid. Yeah. <laughs> they trap him. And then, <laughs> oh my God. And <laughs> then <laughs> because he's Damien, he keeps <sighs> doing shenanigans them. They have to try to like, you know, roll with the punches on this. This is not what's expected. I love that. So in this movie, the kid is telling the stories and because he's using mind control, she listens to them. Like that would be the underlying part of this movie okay. is that, oh, why would you listen to these stories? Why don't you just kick this kid and be done, right? Uh, or he tells the stories and it lulls her because he has extra, you know, psychic powers and that's how he got her. And then... What I'd love to see is that like... And the they- devil's like, then the devil's like, you know... Then the devil has like commentary after. It's like, no, no, didn't, couldn't cut it. Like, all right, next, you know. Well, yeah, and then the one which like throws him into the oven, and he just like kicks open the door with his like hooves and like walks out, and it just starts like slow clapping, like, (laughs) yeah. No, no, just slow stomping on the ground. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, that's incredible. And then like walls come down, TV audience or something, uh, like confetti. That would be incredible. That's good too. These are all great ideas. Again, give us some money. Tales from the Dark Side: Colon the movie, colon under undercover uh, undercover uh, boss. Yeah. No, yeah. There's some got to cook. There's some cooking. It's underworld boss. I don't know something like that. We can do. We, I, uh, <laughs> Kate, Kate Beckinsale is the first person that was like quadruple cut, uh, crossing over. What do you oh think? I don't know. She's not. She she still needs a check, right? She's good. No, let me ask you something because this is one thing I really liked about this. The Mummy one is, um, Steve Buscemi is great in this. Steve Buscemi is, yeah, fantastic. Actor like in this one. It's very not that he's not a serious. I mean, if you think like about Boardwalk Empire and all that, I mean, he's just he can be a serious actor, but you don't see him in those roles very often, right? And so watching him just kind of be like just taking his revenge out on these people is pretty awesome. It's good, yeah. Now, is this as good as the uh, Tales from the Crypt Mummy episode? Probably not. That one has the better no, no, no. like brain scramble, like uh murder scene in it. Yeah, that one's yeah. That one's good. I, 
I don't. I didn't see a lot of Tales from the Crypt, but I I know specifically what you're talking about. Yeah, because that one's like Very probably the most good. famous of the of the Tales from the Crypt like TV episode. Um, Very good. Yes. Yeah. yeah, but it, yeah, I thought that one was good. I mean, this movie has a a good bit of cameos now. Um, I mean, back then I think some of these some folks weren't like as big as they are now. Um. But yeah, I, I like this. I like overall the story of the mummy. I mean, again, to your point, mummies are another one of those things that aren't very scary to me because they're just dusty and old. They don't move very fast, like zombies. That's it. Yeah, like zombies. Yeah, it's like a zombie. But I guess with zombies. Oh I mean, wait, wait, hold well, on. The that problem was with the zombies, guy from Stay Tuned. That was the guy from Stay Tuned. Well, yeah. Well, the problem with zombies, like the, the thing with zombies, is um why they're better than mummies is that there's just more of them, right? There's just more zombies. That's, that's, it's, it's just a numbers thing, right? It's, it's that death is coming. There's nothing you stop. Stop it. With mummies, it's like, well, this very rich dude uh, might come back. Like, no one's placing an ancient, like, Mesopotamian curse or Egyptian curse on, like, you know, Steve, who is, like, you know, his job was like to filter shit out of the Nile, right? Like he's just scrubbing shit right out. Like he's not getting a curse like placed on his like body, right? Uh, a Knox, I don't know. A Knox and a Stevens not coming back to to haunt someone, or, or you know, that's a good that's a good question. Yeah, like what? Like is there? Well, when pharaohs died didn't like they kill all their servants and bury them with them so they could keep serving them in the afterlife well yeah but they weren't i don't think they were mummified right i think they were just their asses were I, just, like i think they were I, all, no i th I think they also were mummified but they didn't get like the ornateness yeah you know what i mean like they got like the like lower level mummying yeah right sure what if the mummies what if it was mummy on mummy now now i'm interested mummy on mummy violence yeah like the mummies like the mummy like say say they're right and in the afterlife those people have to keep serving the pharaoh for oh my eternity. god could you imagine serving the same shitty them. boss for like that's what i'm saying and then something happens in the crypt in the tomb someone unearths something it triggers mummy reanimation and then the main pharaoh dude is on the run from the other mummies. That's incredible. This is really just like well, this is really just making me want to have like an office space for mummy, like mummies, mummy edition. Everyone's just like, like, could you imagine like you have the Michael Scott of um of pharaohs, right? I'm sure they all were. Were they like super like some of them were super inbred? I'm sure they were terrible. Yeah. And you're just like Jesus Christ! What is uh, every time? Every time you say something, like, that's what Ross. Well, they wouldn't say Jesus Christ. They'd be like, "God damn, yeah, like, Ra! Like I'm in Ra, Jesus." You know, <laughs> I don't know. I it'd be, it'd be, I'd be down to see something like that. It'd be pretty funny. Because yeah, you're right. I mean, I'm more interested in the other other like mummies that are probably just like, I hate being poor, right? <laughs> <You're> yeah. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. There's that. I don't know. I don't know what to say about the gargoyles thing. It's the best story, but I mean, who cares? It's the best story, but the least well executed. No, I mean, the murder is great. The effects on this Murder's movie, great. all Murder's the murders great. are great. This is 1990, right? So I, I didn't really go it. I should probably go into this, but 3.5 million budget, 16.3 million, 1990 did pretty well. So uh -huh. solid there. Yeah. Um, you know, it was good. They got they got John Harrison who directed, uh, you know who did some some work in other movies. Creep Show, Day of the Dead, composer. Uh, did a bunch of other horror type made for TV stuff after this, including a movie that looks incredible called Dinosaur for Walt Disney, which I'd never seen before. Um, and then also and then also was an executive producer on diary of the dead your favorite of the dead george romero thing of course and 2021's dune and directed book of blood 
in anthology of Clive Barker's, but not the one from Hulu a couple of years ago. Okay. So and and he did eight episodes of Tales from the Dark Side, the TV show. So just like Tales from the Crypt, TV show first. So you know, the, the guy like this is decent. It's a decent setup. You know, it's not like you know, it, it, everything went okay. Just not enough to keep bringing it back. Unfortunately. Yep. Well, Nate also directed five episodes of Leverage. I had to throw that in there. Sorry. <laughs> All right. Well, look, leverage. <laughs> well, look, I, I, I mean, I think we've kind of talked through this. I'm, I'm, I'm vastly more interested in all the spinoffs we've come up with. But Nate, I've, I, I, this is this, this is a spinoff episode. Yeah, so. I do have, to, I do have to ask, what's your final cut? Final cut. <laughs> Nate, I, I mean, I like this movie a whole lot. I've wanted you to watch this for a long time. Um, even despite our. I mean, I'd never seen it until you and I watched it. I love the anthology. So I, I'm yeah, on record as saying, just give me a good anthology. And this one is, is, is one of the better ones. Um, there aren't too many bad ones. frankly. I just, again, I like it. Cause I think horror just works. The shorter it is. It, it almost, I feel like it, it tends to be better. The shorter it is. Um, at least That's really good, said. effective horror. Right. So I'm just going to bypass whatever you comment you're just making there. About. So that's what she said. Uh, <laughs> just going to keep strolling and rolling them right through. Um, I'm going to give this movie a uh, seven out oh, of oh. 10. Okay. Um, uh, cat tracheotomies. That was the cat, or feline the cat. tracheotomies. Yeah. Cat, cat in the throat is pretty good. It's pretty good. It's a cool kill. You don't see that happen too often. You're not going to see that in Bo is yeah. afraid. I'll tell you that much. That's true. And that is probably the main reason <laughs> to go see Evil Dead Rise. Because you're not going to. Evil Dead Rise has a chance of that happening. That's fair. Well, there's definitely a and cat that one does not. I mean, yeah, at some point. Yeah. So, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, Mitch, the next movie this guy is coming out with, uh, John, uh, Harrison is Book of Blood quote the book begins which is a prequel to the to the 2009 Book of Blood. It sounds like a DMX album. This guy has got like everything. If you look at this guy's I need to be everything's like there's so many colons. There's too many colons in the titles. Um I don't think I liked it quite as much as you did. Yeah, so this is one of your this is one of your kid classic movies. Is that correct? So you're watching Stay Tuned, and then you're watching this. Is that how? That yeah, works? kinda. Again, I just no one cared what I was doing. Um, <laughs> <laughs> I was just left to my own devices. I don't know if my siblings have seen this movie. If they're aware of it, uh, I'll have to ask them if they're just they even know what this is because I I sure do, and my guess is no one else in my family did. Play. Maybe they were, they were just trying to tell me, hey, we're not watching you, but just in case you get lonely, don't run off with some uh, witch who's going to come. Yeah, I was going to say, like, you see, like, that's prime witch, witch, witch snatch. I, feel, I mean, I feel like I was prime candidate. I was, I was a little chunky, you know, um, I was clearly by myself being able to do whatever I want. Uh, <laughs> So yeah, maybe, maybe I I was probably a, a ideal candidate for for a witch. Okay, damn. Yeah. Um, learned some hard truths about myself today. Sorry, go ahead. I mean, <laughs> this <laughs> we pitched ninety five movies, and then Mitch learned about himself. All right, well, and we learned about you. So, successful episode. Uh, I'm gonna give it a five. This is this is not our standard. Uh, this is not our standard podcast format. A uh, little, little, little loose today. Uh, I forget what your latest kid is. Which horror name again? I'm trying Mara. to remember. Samara. That's right. Samara. Just like in there, like people aren't people aren't sleeping a lot, right? So it I'm is feeling the struggle's real. The struggle, yeah. Is the struggle. Seems we all, real. So, I just. 
can't you can't seem to keep her in the well. Um <laughs> CPS is on their way. <laughs> Just <laughs> there. They are, they are. They are. They are. We're in, sending in love down the well. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they are. They are. They're just, you're going to hear the cars real, real quick. Uh, uh, so just heads up on that. Uh, so yeah, this is a little fun, little fun. This is our spinoff episode where we pitch spinoffs. It's the spinoff spinoff. There you go. Tales from the Dark Side, colon, the movie, colon, the spinoff. Colon, part two. The Good Son, colon, The Good Son Meets Dexter, colon, oh, Hunger God. Games, colon, <laughs> Songbird <laughs> Rises. <laughs> oh, Jesus Christ. Uh, Nate, where can they, where can they find us in all of our, in all of the colons if, if, that we're adding you, to this If you episode? never want to listen to us again, I understand, but if you do, uh, <laughs> at TX by Massacre on Twitter, Texas Podcast Massacre, everywhere else. Give us a call at 346-246-3143, Texas Podcast Massacre at gmail.com. I have a theme month coming up that we need to do. So oh, Lord. Get, get, yeah, sorry, Mitch. Uh, get ready for that. That'll be exciting. And then, yeah, we got, we're going to go see, I'm going to go see Redfield. Mitch is going to go see either Bo is beautiful or Bo is beautiful. No, I'm leaning into it. Was it, was it Jimmy, Jimmy Jam Jaramushi? Uh, I directing it, it probably. Why is he back? He's always back because he doesn't die. That's why, Mish. Uh He's a mummy. Yes. Yeah. So next next week, you yeah, we'll to hear those impressions. You know those. Yes. Yeah. Well. Great. Get excited. Something like that. Well, from all of us here at Texas Podcast Massacre, thank you so much for tuning in, and just keep telling you, it's only a movie. Good night. Thank you.